со излагањата на моите гости и професори да добиеме една една слика за можностите на размена на информации. Дали технички први ние имаме можност тоа да го правиме. Дали граѓаните се едуцирани да ги приберат тие информации преку технички помагала, јавни гласила, социјални мрежи или или еве сега овие алатки телефонски и слични. Јас во овој во овој контекст ке му дадам збор на професорот Сен Вакнин да ни се обрати, а после тоа, ако имаме прашање во врска со, со овој дел, нели, ке, го, ке, ги, ке го прошириме коментарот. Господин Вакнин, јас ве поканувам да, да дадете ваше излагање во врска со ваше мислење во врска со ова, со ова проблематика. Повелете. Окей. Good morning, everyone, esteemed colleagues. My dear, my dear friend, Professor Dr. Zlatko Nikolovsky, thank you for inviting me. I'll try to keep myself to the time frame, which is 10 minutes. 10 minutes to discuss a, a global pandemic <laughs> and recent advances in technology is quite a challenge, but I will do my best. Here's the problem. <laughs> Имаме време, се извинувам. Имаме време така да слободно може и да проширите повеќе од no, I will try to be I will try to be concise. I don't want to take time from from other people and so on. I'm sure they have equally interesting and important things to say. Here's the problem. The dissemination of accurate and timely information as Dr. Nikolovsky has said is always critical. It's critical in science, it's critical in politics, and it's doubly critical in medicine. We have a lot of misinformation and fake information and fake news and conspiracy theories and unmitigated trashy nonsense with regards to every disease, not only COVID. You can find a lot of very dangerous misinformation about cancer about diabetes. So this is not limited to COVID. And so, but in the case of COVID, if we don't have timely, accurate updates, if we don't have peer reviewed, vetted information provided by recognized experts and authorities, in the case of COVID-19, it's a matter of life and death. Literally, it's not a metaphor. It's really life and death, not to everyone, but to vulnerable groups. Old people, people with underlying comorbidities and conditions such as cardiovascular problems, diabetes, etc., etc. Immunocompromised people, pregnant women. So it's a question of life and death, and we can't be cavalier about it. Now, the very distressing fact is that no one is providing timely and accurate information. And when I say no one, I mean no one. Take, for example, the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization provided guidance about masks three and a, three and a half months late it took the World Health Organization 100 days before they updated their masking policy, which could have saved millions of lives. So this is the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization was six months late in updating the latest scientific data about aerosols the spreading of COVID-19 virus, the SARS-CoV-2 virus via aerosols. It took the WHO six months to update this scientific information. And that's the WHO. It took the United Kingdom nine months to put up a functioning smartphone application for tracking and tracing people. And when the application was rolled out, it did not work. And it's not working to this very day. 
the tracking and tracing project in the United Kingdom is a major failure, catastrophic debacle. And this is the NHS. This is the United Kingdom government. <laughs> so if the WHO is failing, the CDC is failing, the United Kingdom government is failing, the United States government, of course, is failing. Who are we to cope with this issue? Who are we to criticize, for example, the Macedonian government or any other government or any other body or institution? Information is managed very badly during this crisis by everyone, especially those who should have been custodians, who should have been guardians of proper, timely, accurate scientific information. This is possibly the greatest failure in this pandemic because we succeeded with vaccines. We even found some medicines. Hospitals are doing much better now. Mortality rate is down dramatically. Everything looks good. The only major failure is information. Now, technologically speaking, everyone involved, everyone involved, I mean WHO, I mean ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, I mean YATA, the International Association of Travel Agents. All these institutions, global institutions, international institutions, and local domestic governments, etc., etc., all of them used two technologies. Two, only two. Either they put up a web page, and the web page was a push only central hub. In other words, it was a text series of texts, and it was pool only, I'm sorry, pool only central hub. In other words, you had to visit the webpage. You had to visit the webpage to retrieve the information. The majority of them didn't even bother to put out a newsletter. There was, there's no newsletter in most of these websites. You have to click, you have to surf to the website to retrieve the information and the websites are catastrophically organized. It's very difficult to find information. And so it's a pool only technology. It's very antiquated, 40 year old technology, a web page. It's not a, doesn't provide push. So you don't get, for example, an SMS alert when there is new content. You don't get a newsletter in the majority of cases. You don't get uh, short email messages with the most updated information. Nothing. Just a web page, static web page, updated when the webmaster has finished his coffee. This was one approach. And the second approach was a smartphone application. And these smartphone applications are even bigger disaster than the web page because the smartphone applications have to be updated constantly. They rely on technologies which are specific to the platform. So some applications work only on iPhone, other applications work only on Google Play, other applications work only on iPhone 11 and above. I mean, it's a mess. The apps out there are a mess. And a tiny, tiny, tiny minority of these applications actually provide information. Most of these applications have to do with track and trace, tracing contacts of infected people. That's 99% of the applications. I, it was very difficult for me to find even one application which provided timely information from multiple sources. I succeeded finally to find one. Very difficult. It took me hours to, to find that one. So, and then, by the way, when I found it, um, Apple Store blocked it. Google Play blocked it because they were not listed with these platforms. So I had to change the settings on my smartphone in order to download it. Can you see an 80-year-old Baba doing this? I can't. These apps are irrelevant, absolutely irrelevant. 
And indeed, they are not downloaded. The adoption rate of smartphone apps in this pandemic is one of the lowest, one of the lowest in the history of smartphone applications. People are not downloading COVID-related applications, which is why the tracing, the contact tracing in Germany, in the United Kingdom, had failed when it was based on applications only. People did not download the applications. So where am I driving it? It's very good to criticize. Do I have a solution? OK, web pages are not updated. You have to surf. You don't get push notifications. You don't get you know any alerts. There are no newsletters. Apps are not working. People don't want to download them. The picture is clear. Is there any solution? I think actually that there is a solution. And I will come to it in a minute. But before I go there, I want to say that today the major sources of travel advice are WHO, World Health Organization, ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization, YATA, International Association of Travel Agents, NHS, CDC, um, domestic, domestic healthcare service providers. So in the United States, National Institutes of Health, Center for Disease Control and Prevention in the United Kingdom, the National Health Ser Service, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and governments. And then there's a whole group of embassies. Embassies put out actually, ironically, the best information, most updated, most accurate, and most timely. But here's the problem: there's no aggregation. You can't find a single location where all these sources are listed simultaneously. You have to go resource by resource separately. Problem number one. Problem number two, a lot of this information is too scientific in jargon. And there are contradictions. For example, for some time, the CDC had recommended masks while the WHO, while the WHO had recommended against masks. That's one example. So there are conflicts between these websites and there's no overriding info, global information authority which will coordinate all these, um, all these data and coordinate all these bodies to produce a coherent single destination, single address page, single app, single something that people will know this is the address for COVID-19. Shockingly, one year later, no one has done this. More than one year, 14 months later, no one has done this. So what is the alternative that I'm proposing? I'm proposing crowdsourcing, a crowdsourcing platform. To those of you who are not initiated in, initiated in technology, I will explain what is crowdsourcing. Those of you who are initiated in technology, please accept my apologies. Crowdsourcing is when you use a technology such as wiki, wiki technology. You set up a page and people from all over the world contribute real-time information. So there's a page, a Macedonian in Boston, Macedonian in Sydney, a Macedonian in, in Moscow, and a Macedonian stuck in Tel Aviv. They can all contribute information to this central page. Wikipedia. Wikipedia of COVID, where anyone can add information and edit information. So this is real time. This is totally timely. This is everything that you need. It's a central location. Everything that you need to know about Macedonians outside Macedonia. Contact with embassies, medical procedures, vaccination, medication. What happens if you get sick? which hospitals, which things to avoid, which things to pursue, how to behave, everything, contact with the embassy, everything. People share their experiences. Then these experiences are invaluable because they reflect reality, not theory. And anyone can access the page, add information, edit information, comment on information, modify information, etc. So this takes care of the timeliness. 
Wikipedia is updated to the last second, absolutely the last second. Why? Because millions of people contribute to Wikipedia and update it in real time. So this takes care of the timeliness. But you could say, wait a minute, what about the accuracy? What happens if people begin to propagate conspiracy theories, misinformation, fake news? They put all these things on the platform, on the Wikipedia page, on the wiki page, I'm sorry, on the crowdsourcing page. Crowdsourcing means we source information from the crowd, from a crowd of people. All of them provide information in real time. In real time, from the smartphone, they edit the page, they provide information. Yes, but how do we know it's accurate? Well, this wiki source, this crowdsourcing platform, we can call it WeCovid, WeCovid platform. This WeCovid platform must be curated. So we have wiki platforms where millions of people contribute knowledge, information, developments, eyewitness testimony, uh, practical data and, and advice, tips. We have such platforms, but there are there is one or two or three people who moderate the content. This, is, this process is called curation. And I'll give you an example. The Encyclopedia Britannica has wiki facilities. You can add to the Encyclopedia Britannica. But whatever you contribute to the Encyclopedia Britannica is then reviewed, curated. This is called curation. So we need a curated wiki page of COVID-19 accessible to all Macedonians all over the world at any moment of the day or night. And we need a body of fact checkers, people who check the facts, people who who are curators, moderators, they delete misinformation, they delete fake news, they delete inf uh, information that is data that is non-scientific. They maintain the integrity of the wiki page. Now, this is called peer review. I'm, I'm a frequent contributor to academic journals. And when I submit an article, it's my contribution to the academic journal. But then my colleagues from all over the world review the article, correct the article, ask me questions, and sometimes deny the article. They don't allow the article to be published because it's not sufficiently substantiated. It's the equivalent of fake news or misinformation or partial information. Partial information can be more dangerous than misinformation. So peer review in academic journals is actually crowdsourcing all the contributors are contributing they're they are the crowd and a group of curators editors moderators who make sure that whatever is published in the academic journal is academic is strong is rigorous and so these people are called gatekeepers what i think the solution is a wiki page accessible to all modifiable by all, uh, anyone can edit, anyone can add, anyone can contribute. And then there's a process of peer review. Curators, gatekeepers, make sure that whatever is published is not counterproductive, will not cause damage. Whatever is published is tried and true. Of course, such a wiki page can easily, can easily incorporate feeds, feeds, from all the websites I mentioned. So such a wiki page will have a segment dedicated to WHO, where the news will be updated constantly. Another segment, YATA, news updated constantly. Another segment, Embassy of the United States, news updated constantly. So it will create feeds of existing websites. It's extremely easy to set up, extremely easy. Um, an IT person, with minimal knowledge can create such a wiki page in about one day exactly one day all the feeds and open the page to contributions from all over the world if i am a macedonian 
and I am in Russia, I know about the situation much more than the Macedonian government. I am the Macedonian who is experiencing the Russian existence, what I can do in Russia, what I cannot do in Russia, where to obtain medication, where, how, which hospital to go to, the, the, the rules of healthcare in Russia, everything. I'm much more updated than any government official. I'm even more updated than institutions because I'm in the ground. I see what's really happening, not the theory, not the high, high flying words, not the speeches of politicians, but the reality. And this wiki page should be about reality, not about aspirations and fantasies. I think there's no other solution because we tried web pages, they don't work. We tried applications, they definitely don't work. This is the, the last remaining technology, crowdsourcing. Thank you very much for listening. Благодариме на вашето излагање, професор Вакмин. Оставам простор, евентуално, некој од присутните, ако сака да постави прашање во оваа фаза нели, на трибината, или евентуално, евентуално покасно. Дали имаме прашање? Я полагајам, но ќе ја оставам, така да има прашање, ќе ја оставам. Значи, прашање би требало веднаш да поставиме, пошто професорот Вакнин има други обврски и ќе се исклучи, односно ќе замине од контакта тривината. Погледајте ако имате прашање. Може да се прашање да поставам? Кенај, аз се кое... Само моментот да те представам. Господинот Томи, добро дојде на трибината. Господин Томи, ние наш повратник од диаспората од Австралија и Нов Зеланд. Па може би покре прашањето, Томи, ке сакаш да ни баш сакав и да, да, те, да те повикам со некој краток коментар за начинот на информирање или... Можноста на информирање на граѓаните, за брзо информирање, мислам, на граѓаните во Австралија или Нов Зеланд, живееше долго време таму, па повели прво со прашањето према професорот Вакнин, а потоа евентуално и ако имаш некој краток коментар во врска со можностите за информирање во Австралија и Нов Зеланд. Повели. Ај, хай професор Вакнин. Хелло. Мај квешчен е, хао лонг ќе тек for the wiki concept to start working to operate to be functional or is it is it in is it still is it uh is, is there a team of people that already start working on this uh new it's a it's an awesome idea where people can contribute with their with their with their views with their info correct incorrect or whatsoever and plus we have a lot of uh like the 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 reviewing of the info it's an awesome idea as as you said it's a lot of fake news and macedonia is as you as as you know we are we are number one in something fake news <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's donald trump <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah um the first part of your question thank you for asking the first part of your question I actually answered at the end. I said that it okay. takes one day, one day to set up a functional wiki page. Oh, one day only, okay. Then one day only. Sorry. Actually, two hours. It takes two hours. But yeah. the webmaster has to drink coffee and talk to his girlfriend and so on. So if we take everything into account, it's about one day. Now, one day, the wiki, the technology, but you need to find fact checkers. You need to find curators, you need to find moderators. Yes. And these people must have, for example, medical degree. They must be doctors. Yeah. So you need, let's say, three doctors who will review all this information as it comes in and release it. Now, when I say wiki page, I don't mean to share views, opinions. No. I mean, if you live in Australia and you're Macedonian, you will post okay. on the wiki page. You will post on the wiki page addresses, phone numbers, which hospitals to go to, what to do if you're sick, what is the healthcare insurance, how to travel from Australia to Macedonia, how to travel from Macedonia to Australia, 
What are the rules of quarantine? Which states in Australia are closed down, which are open, etc., etc., etc. You will share real life experience, real time information uh, with the people who come to to see the wiki, the wiki. Now, the government can do this, but it will take the government four, five, six days. If I'm very optimistic, that's being very optimistic. But you, as a citizen, and as a Macedonian citizen in, in Melbourne or Brisbane, you can just type, tick, 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 within seconds, everyone will know what, yes. everything. I, if I'm the fact checker, if I'm the curator, the technical term is curation. If I'm the curator, I will receive your information. It will not be published. I receive it. I will read. If you are sick, go to the hospital. This is the phone number. I say, well, that's not fake news. That's not misinformation. That's okay. I'm releasing it. But if you send something to the wiki and you say, the virus does not exist. Uh, it, this pandemic is, is bullshit. It's not true. I will not release it. I will curate you. I will gatekeep. If you provide useful information from your own life experience, by all means, I will share it with everyone. But if you begin propaganda and conspiracy theories and stupid sentences and so on, I will block block this information. I will not block you. I will not block you personally, because in the future, maybe we'll contribute. But I will block that information. The wiki will not become, uh, cannot become a center, a hub for conspiracy theories, and nonsensical information, not scientific information. So we need one, two, three moderators with medical degrees, doctors, and they will make sure the, the wiki is clean. But think about it. By all calculations, there's about minimum 600,000 Macedonians outside Macedonia. And many people yes. say more than 1 million. Many people say more than 1 million. Yeah. Imagine that you give them this instrument and imagine that 001% contribute, 10,000 people contribute to this wiki. It's, it's enough. It's a thousand times better than any government. Yeah. It's even better than WHO. Because what, what is WHO? It's bureaucracy. It's yeah, bureaucracy. Until, until the pandemic came, these people were going at 9 o'clock to the office, doing nothing until 5 and leaving the office at 5. I know the WHO intimately, trust me. So when the pandemic struck, they started to activate a little. And you see it in the website. You see this mentality, this slow, it's okay, there is time, we will think about yeah. it. Wait a minute, this is lunch now. You know, it's French, French area. This is lunch, sorry. Yeah. You know, you see this mentality. So that updates are weeks sometimes months too late about masks, about aerosols, months. It's not a joke. But a wiki page is updated thousands of times a day. It's the latest of the latest. It's the only technology that will save us. I'm talking globally, not only Macedonians. The only technology that can save us. We cannot rely on institutions. We cannot rely on bureaucrats. We cannot, of course, rely on fake news and conspiracy theories. We need a centralized place with minimal peer review and oversight by medical doctors, but place which will provide up to the minute, up to the second information, yes, what yes. is happening in every corner of the world. So I, I'm a Macedonian. I come to this page. I want to travel to Germany. I scroll down. I click Germany. And I see 20 Macedonians contributed to this page. They tell me what I can do in Germany, what I cannot do in Germany, how to travel to Germany, what happens in the border control, what happens in the border control when I come, what I should produce, what documents I should bring with me, etc., etc. So I go to this section of Germany. By the time I finish reading these 20 Macedonian contributions, I'm fully updated. And I'm updated to the last second. Not six weeks ago, six seconds ago. I see no other option. And I'm shocked, shocked that WHO didn't open such a wiki page. 
absolutely shocked because Wikipedia, for example, today, there are studies that show that Wikipedia is more accurate than Encyclopedia Britannica. There are recent studies, they tested the accuracy of Britannica and accuracy of Wikipedia. Wikipedia is more accurate. If you establish a wiki page and it's mildly moderated, it's more accurate than anything else. Благодарам на и на прашањето и на одговорот. Дали имаме друго прашање? Снова само една реченица би додал колку е додека е професорот Сен тука колку ни се битни тие брзи информации на крајот дури малку и изфилтрирани, прочистени, вистински да не се лажни од нашите институции кои еве отворено ќе кажам Јас долги години сум работел во државна институција, сега од погледнато од граѓанскиот сектор, приметував дека а, на веб страниците буквално се а, министрите а, цело време се фалат за некакви состаноци и слично правите информации за граѓаните не ги испорачуваат. Да речеме еве последниот период, а, буквално се претвори а, одредени веб страници во полициски билтен или во билтен не знам зашто министерот денеска направил пет состаноци кои немаат врска со со потребата на како информација испорачана на граѓаните тоа се работни обврски кои те како тој треба да си ги да си ги се земно значи а, ова прашање ова прашање и како треба се проширува особено после оваа пандемија затоа што не е само пандемијата тука има вонредни состојби еколошки катастрофи каде што а, на луѓето им се потребни I want, I want one more sentence with your permission, uh, Dr. Nikolovsky. Can I add one more sentence? What the pandemic has taught all of us, all over the world, not only Macedonia, is to not trust institutions and to not trust um, governments to save us. What we don't do ourselves, no one will do for you. No one will do for us. Now, I am not talking about becoming aggressive or violent and storming the capital. That's not what I'm talking about. There are technologies which we as citizens can adopt and take care of our needs, not rely on institutions or, or governments, because they failed. They failed, absolutely, and they failed us. So. Wiki technology is one such example, crowdsourcing. Crowdfunding as well. There are democratic, liberalized technologies which put power in the hands of the simple men. And we need to adopt these technologies simply to survive. Because if you rely on institutions and governments and embassies and international associations to provide you with timely, accurate information, It's not good. You're not going to get it. Благодарам, професоре Вакнин. Thank you. Thank you all. За вашето присуство. Пренесете поздрави до вашите студенти во на универзитетот на Ростов на Дон во Русија. Така да се нека и во друга прилика ќе имаме можност да да бидеме заедно. Поздрав. Thank you. Apologies for having to to leave. Apologies. Благодарам. Thank you. Uh...